name is Tiffany and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I have another Upcycle by Little Toe for you today where I take old forgotten items and give them a new life, but I'm doing something a little different in today's video. Instead of my regular sewing upcycles, I'm going to be doing a furniture flip. The system or lack of system that I have right now is just not working and everything is a big mess. So I'm kind of looking for a cabinet that can store all of my things together. I looked online and I found this anthropology cabinet, but it's just way too expensive. And I wanted to see if I could try to recreate this. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I turned this dated cabinet into this anthropology inspired cabinet. I found this cabinet for $50 on Facebook Marketplace and here it is stuffed into my car. This piece is pretty solid and really heavy and while it's very dated, it was in decently good condition. The inside of the cabinet also looked pretty good except for this hole cut out in the backing and all of the drawers worked perfectly. You can see here that the backing is in pretty bad shape so I'm definitely going to replace this. Here is the inspiration piece from Anthropology. It retails for $1,298 and while this is absolutely gorgeous, it is way over budget. I love the modern yet timeless look of this armoire, but what really drew me to this piece are these gorgeous brass and lucite hardware. I started out by removing the doors in all of the drawers. Then using my sander, I sanded the entire piece. My plan is to paint this so I wasn't too worried about getting any of the original stain off, but I was just trying to get everything as smooth as possible. I used the sander for most of the cabinet, but also hand sanded all of the curved surfaces. I made sure to sand the drawer fronts and the doors as well, and here is what it looked like when I was done. Not the prettiest, but it was really smooth to the touch. It is a new day and I've gone ahead and given the cabinet a quick clean and then I brought it inside and as you can see here, I've also gone ahead and taken off the backing. This cabinet is in pretty good condition, but there are several small nicks and scratches. So I picked this up at the hardware store and I'm just gonna use it to patch any of the imperfections. The guy at the hardware store said I could either use a putty knife or my finger to spread out the wood filler for any small holes or scratches, so that's exactly what I did. Here are some of the larger holes in the process of being filled. I did have to do this several times and sand in between for a nice even finish. I let the wood filler dry overnight and then smooth everything out with a sanding block. Now that all the wood filler is dry and sanded, I'm gonna go ahead and use this white lightning cleaner by Dixie Bell to give the cabinet a good clean. But before I started cleaning, I decided to prop the cabinet up onto some scrap wood to avoid it sticking to the drop cloth later when I paint. Following the instructions, I mixed the white lightning cleaner with hot water and using an old t-shirt, I gave the entire cabinet a good clean. I worked really carefully making sure that I didn't miss any spots and just look how disgusting this water was after I was done. Then I wiped everything down with some warm water and I actually did this twice making sure to get rid of any leftover residue from the cleaner. I'm gonna be painting this cabinet white and I have a really strong feeling that this orangey red is going to try to seep through, so I'm gonna be using Dixie Belle's Boss as a primer. I decided to use a foam roller for this because I thought it would give me a smoother finish compared to a brush. I worked my way across trying to make this layer as even as I could. The doors and drawers were pretty easy to paint since all of the surfaces were mostly flat. The main body of the cabinet was slightly trickier to paint, but I switched between the foam roller and a brush to accommodate for any curved surfaces. Here is what the cabinet and the drawers look like after two coats, and this side of the doors only had one coat of boss at this point. I've left the two layers of boss to dry overnight and now I'm ready to paint, and I wanted a pretty neutral white so I picked this color, it's called Fluff by Dixie Belle Paints. And I've never used Dixie Belle Paints before, so I watched a ton of YouTube tutorials and a lot of people used a spray bottle to water down the paint, so that's what I'm gonna do. I sprayed some water onto the drawer front and I decided to use the foam roller again since it worked so well with the boss primer, but as you can see here, it definitely did not work well with this paint. It created all of these bubbles on the surface and I was definitely low-key panicking at this point. Okay, so I started off with this foam roller and that obviously didn't work, so I switched to this regular roller and that also didn't really work, so I switched to my brush and I'm pretty happy with the way it's looking, so that's what I'm gonna use for the rest of this project. Here is the drawer after the first coat of paint and it looks so much better than that bubbly mess so I continued with my brush for the body of the cabinet as well. I lightly sprayed with water and then painted as evenly as I could. This paint was relatively easy to work with once I got the hang of it but if anyone has any tips on how to properly use this, help a girl out and please let me know in the comments below. Here is what it looked like after two coats of paint and despite the minor hiccup, I was pretty happy with how it was looking. The paint is now dry and I'm going to be using this polycrylic in clear satin as a top coat. Using a brush, I painted a thin layer and I was also really careful to remove any drips along the way. I'm not gonna lie, this process was slightly annoying because I kept getting little pieces of fuzz stuck to the top coat that I had to painstakingly remove, so if you have any tips for me on this as well, I would greatly appreciate them. 
I'm just waiting for the top coat to dry and while that's drying, I'm just gonna go ahead and make the handles. And I initially wanted to just buy handles, but everything that I found was either too small or too expensive. So I'm going to attempt to make them and this idea definitely works in my head. So let's see if it works in real life. Here are the items I bought. These are 5 8 inch acrylic dowels that I got on Etsy and have already cut down to size. I also got these half inch copper tees, these half inch copper elbow fittings, and this 5 8 inch wooden dowel. I started by spray painting all of the copper fittings with gold spray paint. I did two coats letting them dry for a few hours in between. While waiting for these to dry, I'm going to hang the doors back onto the cabinet. So I'm slightly frustrated right now because I'm trying to put the cabinet doors back on and this is a task that should take no longer than five minutes but it's literally taken me hours because I got these really, really pretty aesthetically pleasing gold screws to go with all my gold hardware but these screws keep breaking. Like the heads just keep breaking off and then the screw is stuck in the wood and I've spent hours trying to get the screw out. So I am a little frustrated right now. This is what keeps happening to the screws and here is the other half that is still stuck. I did eventually get the doors back on so let's get back to the drawer pulls. Here are all of the items I used for each drawer pull. Using this T as a guide, I insert the wooden dowel and then mark this point with a sharpie. As you can see here, the wooden dowel fits pretty snugly in the copper fitting. I'll cut three pieces according to this measurement and you should have something that looks like this. Next, I use a little bit of glue on the inside of this copper tee here and then insert my cut dowel piece and you should have something that looks like this. I repeat this process gluing the cut dowel piece into one end of this elbow fitting and then again for the other elbow fitting. To attach the acrylic dowels, I put a little bit of glue on both sides of the tee and then insert the dowels in place. Then I put a little bit of glue in this elbow fitting attaching it to this end of the acrylic dowel. Repeat the steps again for the other side and here is the completed drawer pull. I made four more and let the glue cure for 24 hours. To figure out the placement of my drawer pull, I've taped painter's tape along the center of the drawer and then marked the center point. I line up the copper tee to that center point and trace the base of the tee. Then I trace the placements of both elbow fittings. Now I'm just measuring on both sides to make sure that its placement is evenly spaced on the drawer. Then I went ahead and drilled the holes. I'm attaching my drawer poles with screws that I also spray painted gold so that all of my hardware would match. Here you can see the screws on the inside of the drawer and they are screwed into the wooden dowel part of the drawer pole. I tightened all of the screws securing the pole in place and this is what it looks like on. I am honestly shocked at how well these turned out. Last step is to attach the poles to the doors and this upcycle is all done. Here is a reminder of what this cabinet looked like before and this is what it looks like now. This was a pretty tedious upcycle but I am so happy with how this turned out. These drawer pulls are definitely my favorite part of this entire project and I think I achieved a pretty similar look to the anthropology armoire. Here is what it looks like on the inside. I replaced the backing and I also added some new shelves. You guys know I can be a little bit extra sometimes so I even spray painted these magnets gold. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit different from my regular content, but I had so much fun with this furniture flip. If you want to see more photos of this cabinet, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Little Toe. If you liked this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and let me know in the comments below what you thought of this upcycle. As always, thank you so much for watching.